That's like saying, Satan, can you come to my house? It's the same thing. You're inviting an evil spirit to your home without even knowing it in the name of Jesus. And then we wonder why people are against Israel. Is there a fake Israel? There is no such thing as a fake Israel because God's, if there was, God would say that someone would try to make a fake Israel. Most of the teachings out there of the Hebrew Roots Movement is not biblical because they teach to follow what the rabbis are teaching and not what Yeshua, his Hebrew name being Yeshua, Jesus was teaching. So basically we're to follow only Jesus, only Yeshua, we're not to follow the rabbis. And a lot of times when people start loving Israel and start following Israel, they think that they need to start following the rabbis because the rabbis are Jewish and they know everything. But Jesus said, you need to follow me. And Jesus also said in Matthew 5.14 that we are, you are the light of the world. And if we're the light of the world, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And we need to be a testimony to those that don't believe. And they're supposed to be following us because Yeshua is in us and we're not supposed to be following them. So this is a, a big controversial subject. And we have a, a situation where Christians are trying to be like Jews but not Jews like Yeshua, Jews like the Pharisees without even knowing it. And then we have other Christians that say, we don't want that, we don't want to become a Pharisee. And they totally reject Israel and, and, leave, the, and leave the true gospel alone. So it's kind of like a, a hindering, a hindering uh, spirit that's blocking everything. I was once an Orthodox Jew. I grew up as an Orthodox Jew. I was a, a Sanhedrin rabbi, authorized Sanhedrin rabbi. My father, grandfather, ancestors were all rabbis. When I accepted Yeshua, when the Holy Spirit filled me up and I had the revelation that Yeshua, Jesus is the Messiah, I didn't want any more religion. I wanted Yeshua, I wanted the Bible, I wanted the truth. And the truth can only do one thing, set you free. So the question is, how does this tie in? Do we reject Israel totally or do we follow? How do, how do, where's the balance? The balance is the Word of God in context. That's the balance. And even the feasts of the Lord are to be celebrated by all Christians because when you're, when you're born again, if you're born again and you called on the name of Jesus, whether you know it or don't know it, you are grafted into the olive tree. That's found in Romans chapter 11, verse 17. What is the olive tree? The olive tree is Jesus, but it's also Israel. We find this in the book of Jeremiah. It says, I called you Israel, a green olive tree. So if you have really accepted, if you're born again, not religion, born again, you're automatically grafted into that, to that olive tree, which if you're not born in Israel, in the flesh, then you're spiritually Israel, what we know will be in the new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. Does that mean that we follow the rabbis? Absolutely not. We follow one rabbi and his name is Jesus, Yeshua. There's nothing in the Bible that talks about a fake Israel. So already we know it's not from the scripture. We know it's a demonic spirit operating there. If there was going to be a fake Israel, the Bible would say it. There's no fake Israel. So that means that Israel today is Israel. However, the covenant that God made with Abraham, the boundaries of Israel were much bigger. The Israel that we have now is smaller. If you want to look at the biblical uh, uh, boundaries of Israel, you go to Iraq, you go, it expands to Jordan, and it's, it's huge. And we read it, and if you read the whole chapter of Isaiah 49, you'll see that it even says that people are saying, it's too small for us, so it's in the Bible. So are the boundaries the same as the Bible? No, it's much smaller now. Is it the same place? Absolutely. Is there a fake Israel? There is no such thing as a fake Israel, because God's, if there was, God would say that someone would try to make a fake Israel. So all these accusations against the Word of God have no biblical basis to them. And therefore, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty much a closed conversation. Unless someone can uh, show me a Bible scripture, email me, the Messiah of Israel Ministries, a Bible scripture, not a Talmud scripture, a Bible scripture that shows me that there is going to be a fake Israel. If that is so, we can discuss it. If you don't have a Bible verse to back it up, then this conversation is pretty much done. The Bible says in uh, Psalms 122 verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. And the question is, do the Christians around the world love Yeshua? 
That's that's the question. Because if they love Yeshua, then they need to support Israel. Because Psalms 122.6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'll say it again. They shall prosper that love thee. In Hebrew, in the original Hebrew text, love thee cannot mean a city. So therefore, it doesn't mean if you love, if you pray for Jerusalem, you love Jerusalem. It means if you pray for Jerusalem, you love Jesus, you love Yeshua. That's why love thee refers to Yeshua. Now you say, where is that scriptural? Well, it is scriptural because the Bible says so, but Yeshua says it over and over ago. Zechariah chapter 2, 8. Israel's the apple of my eye. Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those that bless Israel. I've written my name on Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the place where my name is. So he equals himself to Jerusalem all over the, the Bible. And here he's saying in Psalms 122, verse 6, that if you love Jesus, first of all, if you love Jesus, if you love Yeshua, then pray for Jerusalem. So the question is not do Christians need to pray for Israel. The question is do Christians love Jesus? And if Christian loves Jesus, and it's the Jesus and the Bible, they need to pray for Israel. The Talmud are books written by Orthodox rabbis, Sanhedrin rabbis. Sanhedrin, we, we know about uh, Judas that was given 30 pieces of silver to portray Jesus, Yeshua. He was handed that by the Sanhedrin. Those are the religious leaders of today, the rabbinical movement in Israel. They're the ones who wrote those books. They claim that it's the oral Torah that God gave them the word. It doesn't matter what they claim. It matters what the word of God says. And God's word says very clear, do not add or do not subtract from my book. So that means that if we're studying, looking, or taking a Talmud or any other book at face value over the word of God, it's not scriptural, it's against the word of God. Once again, it comes down to this. The rabbis, we love, first of all, we want to make everything clear. We're not against the Orthodox Jews. We love them. But loving them does not mean we can love them over righteousness. The gospel has to be preached. The truth has to be proclaimed. I studied the Talmud when I was an Orthodox Jew. I studied the Gemara. I studied the Zohar. I'm familiar with those books very well. I do not touch them anymore. I do not quote. You'll never hear me quote them in any of my teachings. On the contrary, I tell people don't get near them. Don't, don't, uh, quote them, don't study them. And I've heard people say, you know, I don't believe in the Talmud, but I'm going to use it as a reference. Please don't. That would be like using the Quran as a reference. And I, my ministry, Messiah of Israel, gets emails all the time asking me, you know, what does the Talmud say here? What does the Talmud say there? And it really, what really burdens me and it, it is when I hear uh, Jews that believe in Yeshua or Christians that believe in Yeshua that are teaching in their congregations, they'll go, they'll, they'll preach a whole sermon, the sermon is so good, and then out of nowhere, they'll say, and the Talmud says this, and the Talmud says that. What are they teaching their flock? They're teaching their flock that you need to go buy a Talmud and start studying it. That's like saying, Satan, can you come to my house? It's the same thing. You're inviting an evil spirit to your home without even knowing it, in the name of Jesus. And then we wonder why people are against Israel. That's not Israel. That's rabbinical Judaism. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees. We're followers of Yeshua.